Servicio. Pagasa. At saya. GMA Regional TV. Kapuso ng bawat Pilipino. GMA Regional TV Weekend News. Good afternoon. This is your GMA Regional TV Weekend News. The biggest, the latest, as local news matters. Real Suroche. Sarah Hilomen Velasco. Sheila Vergara Rubio. Broadcasting live from GMA Davao Complex in Davao City. We'd like to welcome our Kapuso viewers from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, as well as our Kababayans all over the world watching us through Jemmy Pinoy TV and Jemmy News TV International. This afternoon, we will be joined by Jemmy Regional TV correspondents, R. Jill Relator of One Mindanao, Rain Palino of RTV Bicol, and John Sala of RTV One Western Visayas. You know, Riel, Sheila, since Christmas is just around the corner, now is also the best time to showcase the beautiful holiday vibes in the regions as well as get inspiration for the stories in our localities. That's right, Sara. We also have our other counterparts from the regions, Jasmine Gabriel Galban of Balitang Amianan and Alan Domingo of Balitang Bisdak. For today's headlines. In the Bicol region, after Typhoon Tisoy's devastation, clearing operations begin. Compostela Valley Province holds historic plebiscit for its new name. In Cebu, a man was arrested for spreading fake news about kidnapping. GMA Regional TV took home eight ANAC TV seals for its program and specials. And a salute to more than 100 Mindanaoan top notchers in the licensure exam for teachers. The recent typhoon that hit the country has left damages in many areas, especially in Camarines Sur. Rain Palino of RTV Bicol has the update live. Rain. Real clearing operations in different parts of Bicol region continue in the aftermath of Typhoon Tisoy's devastation. Parts of Camarines Sur experience heavy flooding in the storm's wake. In the municipality of Milaor, most of the houses were submerged. Some residents had to ride a boat to look for clean drinking water. Three landslides were recorded in Tinambak, Camarinesur. In Panganiban Drive, Naga City, the waters were waist deep. Naga City was declared under a state of calamity. Forced evacuation was also implemented. In the city, there are 46 evacuation centers. According to the Naga City Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office, there were 5,725 evacuees. Uh, natupad yung ating objective na zero casualty. In Magarao, flood waters overflowed into a farm. While in Calabanga, strong winds left broken cable wires, tilted posts, and uprooted trees. Typhoon Tisoy also destroyed many fishing boats in San Miguel Bay. The DTI Camarinesor has implemented a 60-day price freeze on commodities in all wet markets, supermarkets, groceries, bakeries, and water refilling stations in Naga City. Based on the initial report of Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council of Camarines Sur, 9,382 farmers were economically displaced. 
Department of Agriculture Region 5 is now finalizing the list of interventions to the six provinces. While the Department of Agriculture Camarinesur allocated 43 million pesos for those affected. The almost classes will resume on Monday, while trips on land, sea and air are back to normal for the whole Bicol region for now. Riel. Thank you, Rain Palino. Coastal waters in Pangasinan Town are now free from red tide toxins. Coastal waters in the municipality of Suwal in Pangasinan are now negative from toxic red tide based on the latest laboratory reports of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. Based on the Shellfish Bulletin Number 23 series of 2019 issued by BFAR on December 2, shellfish collected from the coastal waters of Suwal Town are now free from paralytic shellfish poison. BFAR informed the public that all types of shellfish as well as fish, squid, shrimps and crabs gathered from the area are safe for human consumption provided that they are fresh and washed thoroughly and internal organs such as gills and intestines are removed before cooking, the bulletin said. Meanwhile, coastal waters of Bolinao, Anda, Wawa Inbani and Alamino City, Alamino City continue to be free of red tide toxins. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is constructing a center for internally displaced persons caused by the series of earthquakes in Mindanao last October. Our Jill Relator has the details. While well, Filipino families are busy with preparations for the Yulitide season, most residents of Makilala Town in Cotabato Province, who were severely affected by the series of major earthquakes in Mindanao last October, wish they could transfer to comfortable shelters. Kung Christmas wish ka nang makabalik na may sa amu ang amu ang kuan na normal na unta mo ang sana panginabuhi ani sir. As part of a joint project between the LGU and the AFP, a few shelters were already constructed by the 52nd Engineering Brigade in a private lot in Barangay San Vicente from a 9 million pesos donation by the AFP. Aside from the 57,000 pesos worth of each core shelter, a consolidated kitchen, elevated water tanks, and separate male and female bathrooms and toilets will also be built in the area. Regarding po sa lupa, ang nag-provide noon is uh, temporary uh, relocation lang yon. Uh, certain Sir Darius Gloriani. Out of the five barangays in Makilala, which were earlier declared as high-risk areas, residents of three barangays, namely Bato, Luwayon, and Malungon, will soon transfer to the temporary shelter areas. Meanwhile, pupils continue to hold classes in the temporary learning shelters. Curvin, a grade 2 pupil, still wears hard hat since aftershocks are still being felt. Si Mama o si Papa. Ano man daw kagipalitan? Para dito ang unsa kung maulugan ba ito? Huwag linog. Gumawa po yung mga parents ng lear temporary learning shelter para makater din po yung mga bata. Since the school grounds of Bulacanon Central Elementary School are being used as an evacuation camp of Barangay Bato IDPs, school management designated a space where classes will be held. Huts were converted into learning areas with teachers using old calendars and manila paper as their visual aid since no blackboards are available and students sitting on laminated socks. Isod kaayo ang learning sa mga bata pero na ano man should ni siya wala na may mahimo dawato na lang namo ang kamatuuran nga ingani at least gipadayo na mo ang responsibilidad sa mga bata. Together with cameraman Jojo Solarte, I am Orgil Relator for GMA Regional TV. Authorities arrested the former bodyguard of Kappa Ministry International founder, Pastor Joel Apolinario, for illegal possession of firearms. Millions of pesos were also recovered from the suspect. Edelberto Napuan was apprehended at a checkpoint in Licanan, Davao City, carrying unregistered 45 caliber pistol. The suspect was the former bodyguard of Pastor Joel Apolinario, who was on his way to General Santos City from Bislig, Surigao del Sur. Aside from charges of illegal possession of firearms, Napuan was also charged with corruption of public officials after he tried to bribe the arresting officers. 
More than 4 million pesos in cash was also recovered in his possession. Ah, wala pa to kay bago mo ato na ko na palit po. Na pwede daw kwarta sir, asa man to gikan ko kwarta. Atong kwarta sa una sa kuan ko to compound dito na ko sa kapas ona. Pay out to ni mo. Pay out na ko sa una sa April. April nya bit 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 bit. Oh, na dela dala to na ko. Siyempre ako man. In what is considered grisly murder cases, two students in Banga, South Cotabato, and La C. Sigihor were found dead separately after going missing for days. We have this report. After missing for two days, a 16-year-old grade 10 student was found dead in an irrigation canal in Barangay Punong Grande in the town of Banga, South Cotabato. The victim was identified as Barbie Innocencio, a student of Notre Dame of Banga. During the follow-up operation by the police in Isulan, Sultan Kudarat Province, the suspect, Richard Gumilid, was killed. Police are still looking into the motive behind the killing. But the investigation revealed that Barbie's mother admitted that she had an illicit relationship with the suspect. In Lazi, Sikihor, a man was accused of killing his own grandson. The lifeless body of 11-year-old Vincent Burwanga, a grade 6 student of Simakulong Elementary School, was wrapped in a plastic and placed inside the sock. According to the victim's mother, her son has been missing since November 25 after he was allegedly beaten by his grandfather, Ernesto Bonilla Sr. But the suspect vehemently denies the allegation. I am Real Soroche for GMA Regional TV. A historic plebiscite was held today which will rename the province of Compostela Valley. To give us updates, here's Argil, relator of RTV1 Mindanao, live from Nabuntulan Town in Compostela Valley Province. Argil! Yes, Sheila President Rodrigo Roa Duterte on April 7 signed Republic Act 11297 renaming Compostela Valley Province to Davao de Oro. Today, a plebiscite was held to garner yes votes from the majority of the registered voters in the province for the law to be ratified and further implemented. 20 minutes before the official opening of polling precincts at 7 in the morning, Melvin Hidalgo and his wife were the first voters to arrive at the polling center in Magnaga Elementary School in Pantukan Town to look for their assigned precincts. Importado yun ninyo ang lakang karoon sa panggobyerno sa Kompan? Ah, simple, natural. Usapun ka pangsyonaris, mungusportar po ta sa ito ang ato ang panggobyerno. In the presence of the witnesses, the chairman of the board of the plebiscite inspectors unsealed the ballot box to start the voting. Julito Sabilino was the first to vote in clustered precinct 69. It took each voter less than 30 seconds to vote. Should a voter agree to change the name of the province, the word yes must be written on the ballot. Otherwise, the word no should be written. Yes. Similar to previous elections, some voters still had a hard time looking for their assigned precinct. Tautoan na po, sir. Natuyo kang talagang mo precinct? Wala pa na ko makurutanan. Sa una, Dayas, kanag buta? Sa 64. High-ranking officials of the province also went out and voted. Governor J.V. Tyrone Uy and his father, senior board member Arturo Uy, arrived 10 minutes after the polls opened. If makonfirm na tayo ng COMELEC, uh, will be officially named as Dabao de Oro and will be one with all other provinces in Dabao region. Yeah, definitely. One is uh, ma-identify da yun ta kung asa ang Dabao de Oro. When you say Dabao, it's in the, within the Dabao region. Unlike before, Compostela Valley province, uh, maraming Compostela. Eh. So Cebu, Meron. There are fewer voters in today's plebiscite compared to the previous elections. Out of the 430,000 registered voters, the provincial government expects a 40% voter turnout in Makot Town. 
Vultures arrived in trickles for some polling precinct. The situation is the same in polling precincts in New Sibunga Elementary School in Nabunturan Town. On the other hand, at the provincial center in Nabunturan, more voters arrived compared to other polling centers. At present, out of the five provinces in Davao region, only Comval does not bear Davao on its first name. Sheila, 3 p.m., the voting was officially closed and all the results from all the polling centers will be submitted to the Provincial Board of Plebiscite Canvassers. Sheila. Thank you, Argil Relator. Jemmy Regional TV received eight Anak TV Seal Awards because of its child-sensitive and child-friendly programs. Joan Ponsoy has the details. GMA Regional TV once again has been lauded as a child-friendly regional channel at the 2019 Anak TV Seal Awards. For producing quality, relevant, and child-sensitive content, GMA Regional TV received eight Anak TV Seal Awards. Among the awardees are local newscasts, GMA Regional TV Balitang Amianan, GMA Regional TV One Mindanao, GMA Regional TV One Western Visayas, Festival specials of GMA Regional TV were also given the ANAC TV Seal Awards. Pit Senor, the GMA Regional TV Balitang Bisdak Special Live Coverage. Halabira, the GMA Regional TV One Western Visayas Dinagyang Festival Special Coverage. Kapuso sa Kadayawan, the GMA Regional TV One Mindanao Special Coverage. And Kapuso sa Panagbanga, the GMA Regional TV Balitang Miana Special Live Coverage. Biyahing Do 30, which airs via GMA Regional TV's Mindanao channels, also received an ANAC TV seal. On behalf of GMA Regional TV, nagpapasalamat tayo sa ANAC TV Inc. for giving us the seal of um, ANAC TV. Uh, this is our third year that we've been receiving uh, this uh, seal. Ako'y talagang nagagalak sapagkat ang um, ating mga newscast, no, eh, na-elevate na natin. Uh, elevated to the next level of giving quality um, content. Together with cameraman Jing Dakanay, I am Joan Punsoy for GMA Regional TV. Hey, and here's a weather update for today. Tail end of a cold front is affecting the eastern section of northern Luzon, which br brings cloudy skies with some scattered rains and thunderstorms over the provinces of Cagayan, Isabela, Apayao, including Babuyan Group of Islands. While northeast monsoon also brings cloudy skies with some light rains over the provinces of Ilocos, the rest of Cordillera Administrative Region, and the rest of Cagayan Valley, including the northern portion of Aurora. The rest of Luzon down to Visayas and Mindanao will only have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some isolated rain showers and thunderstorms, mostly in the afternoon or evening. And for our wind and sea condition, we have strong surge of the northeast monsoon, which brings a rough sea condition over the northern Luzon. While for the rest of Luzon and Visayas, we'll only experience moderate to strong winds with moderate to rough sea condition. And for Mindanao, we'll only have light to moderate winds with slight to moderate seas. And as of today, we do not have any tropical cyclone within the Philippine area of responsibility and we are not expecting any to develop within the next two to three days. And that's our weather update for today. Reporting from Pagasa, Visayas, DOSD in Mactan, this is Netherlands Salitrero. Have a great weekend. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. Philippine team continues to dominate the 30th SEA Games. To give us more details, we have Jasmine Gabriel Galban of RTV Balitang Amyanan Live. Jasmine. Sara Team Philippines pads lead in SEA Games gold medal race. 
From day one, Team Philippines wasted no time in their gold medal pursuit at the 2019 SEA Games. Pangasinan Pride and 2019 World Artistic Gymnastics Champion Carlos Yulo won gold in the men's artistic gymnastics all around and floor exercise event, capping his campaign with two golds and five silver medals. Another pride of Pangasinan, Mary Ann Lopez, won the gold medal in the Southeast Asian Games Hook Takraw event. Bosh, buhay po talaga yung pagtitraining namin doon. Yung kahit injured, injured na, kahit may mga masakit na, sige pa din kasi yun, ginagawa po namin to para sa bayan. Cebuana, Marjeline Didal, pocketed gold in women's elite division on Game of Skate. The Asian Games champion showed flawless performance in a skateboard face-off with Phil Am teammate Christiana Means. Ina-enjoy lang namin. Nakita niyo naman, chini-cheer up po din namin yung ibang bansa. Wilbert Ayonzo and Permari Canieda also bagged gold medals in dance sport category. Maning kamot lang yun ta, salig lang yun ta sa atong kagalingon o disiplin na yun. Kayo mo mo ganyan number one nga makapa himong tao sa usa ka tao. Never stop dreaming and if naana mo din na sa murag pa doon sa peak sa inyong career, ka nang always practice yun and always keep your feet on the ground and every achievement you have, you always put it in your heart. 23-year-old Leia Denise Belgira from the province of Guimaras received a gold medal in women's downhill mountain bike competition. Ed Marta Cuel, a native of Tubungan, Iloilo, also bagged the gold medal in the Pencaxilat men's Sinitingal singles event. Despite the challenges, especially in funding her training, Debbie Mahinay, also known as Big Girl Hate, won the silver medal in breaking Big Girls category. It's a big win for Arnisador Jezebel Morcillo from Bucana, Davao City. After winning the gold medal in a match with her Vietnamese opponent in Arnis Live Stick Bantamweight Division, Morcillo considered the SEA Games medal her biggest achievement in her career so far after six months of tough training. Salamat sa tanan ninyong support at taga-dabaw. Salamat sa inyong pag-cheer. Misang wala ka mo nakita. Salamat yun ka ayaw. Christine Organiza Haliasgo, a native of Bukidnon, ruled the women's marathon held at the Athletic Stadium in New Clark City to win gold medal. Another Cebuana, Mary Joy Tabal, came in next to settle for the silver medal. The marathoners threaded a 42-kilometer stretch in nearly three hours. And for the medal tally update, as of 4.59 p.m., Philippines still on top with 199 medals, 85 gold, 60 silver, 54 bronze medal. Second place is Indonesia with 114 medals, 42 gold, 43 silver, 29 bronze medal, while Vietnam remained in third spot with 138 medals, 39 gold, 43 silver, 56 bronze medals. Sara? All right, congratulations, Team Philippines. Indeed, we win as one. Thank you, Jasmine Gabriel Galban. A grandmother from Talisay City, Negros Occidental, suffers from a rare medical condition that has consumed almost half of her face. Adrian Prietos has the details. 65-year-old Lola Norma is hesitant to show her face to the camera. More than a decade, she has been hiding her face with a hat or a bandage. Almost half of her right face has been consumed by an alleged flesh-eating bacteria that her former doctors say have attributed to cancer. It has been five years since Lola Norma consulted a doctor due to lack of funds. Despite her condition, she roams around the streets of Bacolod every day selling food to earn a living. Kitaan mo nila firme kong galibod ko. Amo na ipanawagan ko sa ila ko nanon daw mahatag nila eh. Norma lives with her 70-year-old husband, Eduardo, who is also dealing with a health condition after his both legs were amputated. Pagae lang maayo na wa ang akong mahasawa na hindi lang matrubulan kay siya naging lang ang akong pag-asa to. Norma and Eduardo have three children who are unable to provide for their parents, which is why the couple ended up living in a shack under a bridge. Ah, pisan gitayo yasawa. 
Mexican daw may ginabatsyag pero ginatala lang siya po niya. Dahil ikaw wala sa ilang, isa lang nagakangita. May dapante na di mo. After their story was aired on Gemi Regional TV 1 Western Visayas, students and faculty members of a local state college offered help. Lola Norma was brought to the hospital for a checkup. Bilang isa kakaingot manamon, uh, kinanglan, gid niya magpabatsyag kami kay Lola. Ah, nga may gaulikid man sa iya. The couple were also given grocery items and medicine. Thankfully, ko sa mga faculty, staff, and students nga nagbululig para sa matigayon ang papacheck up si Lola kag mayo man ang health niya. Lola Norma will undergo more medical tests to determine her condition. Yet even now, she says... She feels better because of the help of these kind strangers. Together with cameraman Bradel Castillo, Adrian Prietos, for Jemmy Regional TV. A 21-year-old college student from Danao, Cebu might go to jail for spreading fake news. More of this from Alan Domingo of RTV Balitang Bistak Live. Alan. Real, the peace and order in the now city was challenged after one of its residents claimed kidnappers are looming in their streets. But because of spreading uh, false information, the suspect will be facing charges. Policemen in the now city are preparing to file a case of alarm and scandal and for violation on the laws on cybercrime against a 21-year-old college student who was responsible in spreading fake news on social media regarding the kidnapping case in the city. The suspect was identified as Briggs Granada Alvaro, 21 years old and a resident of Sitio Tabok, Barangay Luok, Danao City. He was arrested in their house. He falsely claimed that the kidnappers on board a white van parked in Barangay Poblacion allegedly enticed him, smell the bottles of perfume they are selling for 100 pesos. Alvaro father claimed he heard a child crying for help inside a van. His purported warning post was shared several times. However, upon police verification, Alvaro's claim turned out to be mere fabrications. Aware of the gravity of his action, Alvaro apologized before the now city vice mayor and the members of the city council. The officials of the now city, however, are bent on filing a case against him for causing fear in the city. This would also serve as a warning to others not to sow terror and fear for the general public. The information office of the now city said that the LGU is strongly against the spreading of fake news. They are also calling on those affected by this fake news to come forward and act as a complainant or witness to strengthen the case against the suspect. Real, the city government also called the public to validate social media, po uh, social media posts before uh, sharing it uh, online. Real. Thank you, Alan Domingo. In Cagayan de Oro City, a man was arrested for producing and selling counterfeit money. Clyde Macascas has the details. In an entrapment operation on Wednesday, Police arrested John Nathaniel Lopez, 35 years old, for selling counterfeit money. Lopez sold 55 pieces of 1,000 peso counterfeit bills to the pusher buyer in the amount of 10,000 pesos. According to the police, a test buy was made prior to the entrapment operation where police also bought bills which were confirmed by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas as counterfeit. Last night, we were able to communicate with the subject niya ni kagat siya no sa ato ang offer or ato ang gipangayo sa iya ha the suspect admitted producing the fake money but strongly denied the allegations of selling them naara gi nagnamugos ako nag nagnamugos ako nga paise kanog ba print ana wa yu wa yu bala ka lang maghimo ba Lopez will face charges of violations of Article 168 of the Revised Panel Code for illegal possession and use of counterfeit notes. Meanwhile, police officials advise the public to be vigilant at all times and immediately report to the police when they spot fake money.
together with cameraman James Yap. I am Clyde Makaskas for GMA Regional TV. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. The killing of a businessman in Bacolod City is one in a growing list of cases in Western Visayas that have yet to be solved before the year ends. The rising number of extrajudicial killings in the region has alarmed the Commission on Human Rights. Jan Sala of RTV1 Western Visayas has the details. Live, Jan! Sheila, as the year comes to an end, the number of unsolved killings in Region 6 still at 120. Authorities are now tasked to solve most, if not all of these, before the year ends. A Muslim businessman was found dead in a vacant lot in Bacolod City. His face covered with masking tape and the words, I love drugs, written on his torso. The man had two gunshot wounds on his head and a sign strapped to his neck saying, Wag tularan, big time pusher ako. The victim was identified as 66-year-old Ontao Sakar who was abducted Monday evening by unknown suspects. His death is the latest addition to the list of 556 persons killed in the region this year. According to Bacolod City Police, the victim surrendered himself to authorities last year as a drug user in the government's Oplantokhang Drive. Kabaluman sila sang sequence pag pusing the Commission on Human Rights says that according to their data, cases of extrajudicial killings in the region has increased from 2017 to 2018. Most of these are linked to illegal drugs. The point is, madamo, madamo ng mga kaso ang until now ay pa ma ma solve so daw ka ka budlay bla or daw ka hindi mayo ang ang inang Information. However, according to PNP Region 6, from January to November this year, 130 of 556 killings recorded were already cleared. 306 can be classified as solved, while 120 are still under investigation. Only five of these cases are related to drugs. Five cases, no? Kibalan mo, hindi kita maka conclude right away nga drug related siya, uh, it must go through process or investigation dan ay bago natin siya ma-declare as uh, drug related. Police Regional Office 6 Director Brigadier General Rene Pamuspusan has already mandated policemen in the region to solve the killings immediately. Para nga uh, makam up na sa mga leads, no? kung may aragid man, kag uh, masolusyon na na natin ining mga problema nga ni. Sheila, the Commission on Human Rights Region 6 added that most of the killings happened in the province of Negros Occidental. Sheila? Thank you, John Sala. More than 100 Mindanaoan graduates were among the top notchers in the licensure exam for teachers. We have this report. Mindanaoans dominated the recently concluded licensure exam for teachers with over 130 graduates from different schools all over Mindanao included in the top 10 in both elementary and secondary levels. In Davao City, at least 23 top-notchers came from the University of Mindanao. Among them is fourth placer in the secondary level, Queenie Damalerio. The university's administration was grateful that most of the top-notchers are students from Davao region. In Kilapawan City, despite the strong quakes that damaged some buildings at the University of Southern Mindanao, the school is in high spirits as one of its graduates, Marlu Kamano from Magpet, Cotabato, garnered 93.4% that placed her in the top spot in the secondary level. USM Kilapawan's Magna Cum Laude, Christine May Soliva, placed 10th with a 90.60% rating. In General Santo City, at least 22 graduates are top-notchers. Placing first in the elementary level with a 92.6% rating is private school teacher Joshua Canseco, who is a graduate of Mindanao State University. Meanwhile, a tricycle driver's daughter, Novalin Barte, brought honor and pride to her family and to Jen San after placing second in the elementary level with a 91.6% rating. 
After her mother died, it was her father, Tatay Rodolfo, who took the responsibility of keeping Novalin and her two siblings in school. And with his early Christmas gift, Tatay Rodolfo said it was all worth it. In Alabel, Sarangani Province, a member of the Blaan tribe and a daughter of an ice drop vendor showed excellence in the elementary level. Dimpol Mangalon got a 90.8% rating, placing fifth in the exam. Her father, Mang Demetrio, was overjoyed that his hard work paid off. A total of 83,152 graduates passed the board exam out of 228,963 in both the elementary and secondary level that was given last September 26. I am Sara Hilomen Velasco for GMA Regional TV. Here's a must-try dish from the so-called island born of fire, Kamigin Island. Ryan Vasquez has the details. Kamigin Island is known for its sweet lanzones and breathtaking tourist spots. But this so-called island born of fire has a lot more to offer, like a delicious dish called native chicken sorol. The ingredients are easy to prepare, starting with some spices, coconut milk, native chicken meat, lemongrass, and oregano leaves. Saute the spices in cooking oil. Add the chicken meat, then the coconut milk. And the lemongrass. Boil for 5 to 10 minutes and add the oregano leaves, onion leaves, salt, and black pepper. Boil again until the chicken meat becomes tender and serve while hot. Flavorful, Gikesha. Strong ang iyang flavor compared to others, which is Although it's already good, but then the boldness of the food nag specify na agid say kuan ka ng strong scent of all those spices. So, when in Kamigin Island, don't forget to try its famous and yummy native chicken sorot. Together with cameraman James Yap, I am Clyde Makaskas for GMA Regional TV. We would like to thank everyone from around the Philippines as well as our Kapusa Abroad for watching today's episode. You can watch this episode and more on Jimmy Regional TV's official YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button to get the hottest news from the regions. And it's 18 more days to go before Christmas. That was the biggest and the latest news from the regions. Thank you for joining us and from all of us here in Mindanao. This has been Jamie Regional TV Weekend News, where local news matters. Happy weekend!